Hey guys, my name is Andre. I'm the founder of Pinnacle Credit Repair, and it's been my company's mission statement for the past 10 years to repair credit the most fastest and most effective way possible. In this video, I'm going to discuss what you need to look out for when hiring a credit repair company or going to repair credit yourself, learning how to repair credit on YouTube from some guru, or hiring one of those monthly uh, type companies. So do me a favor, hit the like button and subscribe if you like, and hit the notification bell if you want further information on how to repair your credit or just credit repair news in general. Because in this video, I'm gonna drop more than a few nuggets that are going to change your perspective on this entire history. Number one, you don't have the experience. Despite the many courses you may purchase online, most of these courses only contain information that you can find out by yourself, and you shouldn't have to pay for any of those courses, including credit repair software. Credit repair software doesn't fix your credit automatically. Credit repair software is only used for the convenience of streamlining the business of credit repair by making disputes more efficient. For instance, if you're running a business and you have a lot of clients, it makes sense to purchase a credit repair software that would help but the term credit repair software is really misleading because the software doesn't repair your credit. In actuality, it's nothing but a CRM, which stands for a customer resource manager. Essentially, it's just, it just stores data in an organized fashion. That way, you don't have to input the name of customers on a spreadsheet. Instead, it's in a program. A customer can enter their information or a, you, the business person or personnel can enter the customer's information and it will pop up. When you run a business and process hundreds of thousands of clients, this helps unless you're one of those people that don't buy the software. Another thing um, as free information like this video, in this video I'm providing you enough information for you to conduct enough research. Hopefully it's enough research for you to get an honest and forthright idea of how credit repair companies work which is the sole intention of this video, and maybe you'd like to hire me. Now I understand you might think that I said that, I have an ulterior motive, however, I'm being 100% honest and frank with you. I'd like you to hire me if the content of this video, what I'm about to share with you, makes perfect sense. If it doesn't, just never come back to this channel. Don't listen to a word I'm saying. All right, number two, Lexington Law. Lexington Law and others follow the same strategies to repair your credit, using cookie-cutter mail disputes. For those of you that have never baked in your life, a cookie-cutter is a device with the sharp edges of cook for cookie-cutting, for cutting cookie dough into a particular shape, giving you the perfect size and dimension to keep the dough into the design you like before baking it at a high heat. In a conventional oven, this is the most accurate analogy I could come up with when trying to explain the credit repair process that all or most of the mainstream credit repair companies follow. Imagine holding in your hand a copy of your credit report. Imagine holding it in your hand. If you don't know how to get a copy of your credit report, it's quite easy. All you have to do is request them from the bureaus. I left a link in this video it basically shows you how to get that. You can obtain one for free here. Um, it shouldn't be difficult, but this is the best way on how to get your free copy of your credit report. Um, for those of you that may not already know, a credit report is supposed to contain all or most of your credit borrowing history, financial history starting from the time you started your first job or making your first payment towards a utility, like a cell phone bill. Your credit report also contains much more than that, including your personal name, the address where you live, and every time you made a payment on your credit card. I'm assuming you've had a credit card before or currently have one since you're watching this video about the top reasons repairing your credit doesn't work. So we have learned your credit report is pretty unique, unlike 300 other U.S. citizens. Now, if we were to look at some factual statistics published by your federal government, they found, okay, Oop. 
they found some interesting they found some interesting uh, information, some data here, okay? They found that over 30% of the population, which is basically 90 million people, have a credit score lower than 620. And um, almost 20 basically don't have a credit score. Now, the reason why they wouldn't have a credit score or become invisible, like where it says here, is because uh, most likely, most likely, they don't have adequate credit history, and that's preventing them from getting positive history because they have bad history from their past, and that's keeping them from getting um, credit cards and other loans or whatever to basically obtain the history. So they're kind of like a sitting duck, and they're in this like really horrible situation where, you know, they have to hire a credit repair company to repair their credit, and there's a billion companies out there that are promising so much stuff. So there's too much information. So this video, um, my purpose of this video is basically take away that headache and just basically cut out the fat and tell you straight up how this industry works, okay? And there's other articles here. You can look more than half of Americans, either credit invisible, have poor credit. Yada, yada. I'm going to leave these links in the video so you guys can see. I know you're watching a screen recording here. Um, but yeah, most of these people, like most of the population, you know, more than half has a score lower than 620. And that's lower than the minimum scoring requirement to get an FHA loan if you want to buy a house, right? And stop paying rent and avoid a lot of crazy tax that you shouldn't pay. All right. So where am I going with this? So we understand there are over 90 million people with very bad credit. Imagine a credit bureau receiving the same cookie cutter dispute that Lexington Law or Credit Saint sent for you. How effective do you think it would be if you hired a credit repair company to you know, make one of these 609 letters and send them to Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion? Maybe you have already hired a company and your dispute was flagged as frivolous or erroneous. Or maybe the bureaus didn't flat out tell you, but what if you got the response stating item meets Fair Credit Reporting Act standards? Then most likely it was because your dispute was just like 10 million other disputes that were sent out from a company that year. So I hope within the past two minutes you have learned that your credit report is completely unique to you and thus it must be disputed in a unique fashion completely customized to your own specific information and violations. Not every single report can be treated the same way unless you want to get the results like everybody else who hires any one of these mainstream companies. To be more specific, allow me to show you where you can find some reviews about these companies that are, you know, pretty accurate to what I mentioned. Okay, let's go ahead and look. So as we can see, bad review after bad review saying pretty much similar things about Lexington Law. You saw that review right there. Now this one, please do not be influenced by the large amounts of positive reviews online by Lexington Law. They have a C rating with the BBB. I've spent half a year and almost 1,000 in legal fees with them, and they only removed one derogatory remark from just my TransUnion report. Upon further research, I discovered it is a common occurrence for them to take your business and send a single dispute letter to the credit unions, then the bill you for the months while they wait for a reply that may never come. If you're reading this, please don't throw away. So you see how on point James from Boston says what's happened and you could go on and on we can go on and on that's just page three there you know there's everyone is basically saying the same thing okay and i know you're seeing positive reviews but you look i was solicited by lexington law to provide credit for service see they're a violation and as we can see bad review after bad review saying pretty much similar things about lexington law's dispute process and what the company was actually able to accomplish for them, including how much they charge. Lexington Law is also known to pay media outlets and reputation companies to fluff their positive reviews. For instance, upon being called by Lexington Law, 
or their affiliates. Yes, they violate the telecommunications and telesales laws as they were sued by the CFPB. And as you can see by John of the Villages in Florida, he tells you that he was solicited. Um, yeah, he was solicited by them. And uh, we can basically um, find some information about that here. We can do there. There it is. I'll leave a link for you guys to basically do some research on that. But this is just to show you, you know, how they work. So I'm being 100% transparent with you. All right. Who else is on my hit list today? I'm entirely joking. I'm not trying to bash anyone. I'm just trying to give you the straight up facts. My intention is just to inform you exactly what is going on and what you have to look out for if you're really going to go on this journey of repairing your credit. Now let's talk about the YouTube superstar, that famous figurehead that was gained that has gained most of the following on the subject of credit repair and has claimed to have found some special loophole inside the credit bureaus that will just magically wipe away your past mistakes and solve all of your credit issues. Well, sorry to disappoint you. Often companies or people claim to have such secret methods or letters, they're just selling you a false bag of goods. Believe me. In the case of the 609 letter, as verbatim, the Experian website, let's find some uh, documentation on that because I don't want you to think I'm just making things up. Heaven forbid that. Okay, 609 letter. We can just type that in there. And then we have Experian. Let's put 609 letter. Experian. It should come. Okay. In the case of the 609 letter, as verbatim, Experian.com says a 609 letter is a credit repair method that requests credit bureaus to remove erroneous negative entries from your credit report. It's named after Section 609 of the Fair Credit Reporting Act, a federal law that protects consumers from unfair credit and collection practices. So as we can see, this is nothing groundbreaking, secret, or in any way special at all. Now, maybe there's more. Perhaps the special loophole he's talking about is what all the old school credit repair people got arrested for abusing back in the early 2000s. Yes, probably heard of the term before, to this day it's still being used, which is referred by the FTC, as surrogatory as you may get in this industry of credit repair. And that's called the credit sweep, okay? So let's take a look at uh, 609 CFPB, or no, FTC, and check it out. I think this is it. Yep, that's it. Load, please. Oh, it wants me to download it. Should we download it for you, ladies and gentlemen? Okay, there we go. We just downloaded it. Please put your eyes to the top of the paragraph. Let me read it for you. But I just want you to see that this is true. The 609 is not true. I mean, well, it's not tr the truth of credit repair. It doesn't really work. All right. 609 and the credit sweep go hand in hand and are none other than for the using that or a particular section of the Fair Credit Reporting Act for the purpose of documenting fraudulent transactions resulting from identity theft. Did you hear me? Okay. The odds of a person having identity theft are over 1 million people a year. To be precise not, or approximate, these are the numbers on government sites. You can fact check everything i challenge you to fact check me about 1.4 million do your research but those account for a form of identity theft mind you it doesn't mean you know pertaining to one account that most likely most likely is caught early by the majority of people and insured by most financial institutions what i'm talking what i'm referring to is called fdic insured let me 
I'm sure you've seen that sign when you go to the teller at the bank. If you go to, if you have a Wells Fargo, but hey, believe it or not, some people, and I, I don't want to make fun of you. This is you. Uh, they don't even have a bank account, but um, you know, it sucks. But don't worry. Check systems, early warning systems. You know, we we can help you. There's a way to get out of that nasty situation. But more than more often than not, those people are doing bad stuff. There it is. You can check it out. There's, you know, I'll leave a link for you guys. You know, all type banks and most banks operate under this federal insurance bond to protect their clients from identity theft. Now, back to my point, the odds of someone having all of their trade lines, both positive in default or potentially negative being created by a criminal opening accounts in your name. I'm sorry, but things don't really work that way. So. It would make sense. It should make sense to you as to why some credit repair specialists on YouTube would use and abuse these types of sections of the Fair Credit Reporting Act, precisely 609, in order to quickly just sweep a file. <laughs> like that saying goes, sweep it under a rug. Well, I'm sorry. You cannot just sweep away your problems, even if some guru on YouTube says you can. I would certainly like to see their success in using such unethical and illegal tactics. All right, so I know this isn't the only trick that that pony has and most gurus do. You know, I know that he's not just a one trick pony, and you can look at this video. Most will speak up front in front of a camera about letters, phone numbers to call, but the biggest problem is what I had mentioned before in the beginning of this video about sending certified letters. Oh, my bad, that was my video prior to this. You might want to watch that video. If you watch Brandon Weaver's channel, he talks very vaguely, as usual, about how to dispute information on your credit reports. And in one of his recent videos, the one that you see in front of your screen, he declares that sending disputes by mail is the only thing that is effective. Well, if you remember all the bad reviews I shared earlier and see my prior videos with my case studies, you would, you would know that 100% is not true. In fact, all of my clients have been disputing online and it's worked for them for over the years now. One thing I will also like to mention is that later in this video, he tells you to file complaints to the CFPB after 30 days of waiting. And that's why it's so contradictory to what he said. Because all complaints are filed online. If you file with the CFPB, all complaints, all those complaints are filed online. Net over the internet online. Because oftentimes they're not going to allow you they're not going to allow you the same rights on the Fair Credit Reporting Act. They're going to put you in this little box, and you have these rights, and you're not getting to utilize them. You're not demanding to get that verification, see that verification for unverified items. They're going to try and say, oh, you can't dispute this. You can't dispute that way. You got to do this. You got to do that. And then, and then you're not sending anything in the mail like you did before. So they said, anonymous response. You've got the proof. You've got the tracking. You know you can file your complaints with the CFPB. They're not responding. They're trying to play this game. But if they do it online, it's a little less tracking. Oh, well, we lost this. Okay, there you have it. He's being vague. He's not really giving clear examples. He's talking really fast. He's a fast-talking used car salesman, ladies and gentlemen. If, he's, if, if his job is to educate you, he's talking really fast. Try taking a, a course at a university where the teacher's like, the guy's talking like he's taking an Adderall. Anyways, I don't want to be disrespectful here. Okay. So be careful on who you listen to and always make sure what they say. If it's consistent and they don't bait and switch you, or play the whole carrot of, on the stick game where they give you just enough scattered information but not enough to get the job done. Or not even giving you in, uh, the correct steps through A through Z. Like chronological, alphabetical order, order however you want to uh, call it. Repairing your credit takes a lot of experience and it is 100% logical and must be treated delicately and to the exact details of the order in which you will have the most success. 
if you follow the story in order, like you send your dispute A, send your dispute B, C through Z, okay? <clears throat> if you just listen carefully to, you know, most of Brandon Weaver's videos, you will understand clearly what I'm talking about. Alright guys, I know this has been a lot for you, but for the time I have today, this is what I could come up with. Uh, this information I'm giving you today is just the main important things to look out for. Therefore, you'll be more educated and you'll save your time and money, and or your time and money won't be spent in vain. Remember, always do your research. Now, if this video gave you more insight on how credit repair really works and answered some questions you had, to go ahead and like this video. Like it, please. If I still didn't answer your question, I'm sorry. Please leave a comment, inbox me, and I'll post a video to answer your question. I promise I will. And um, if you want to have more information on how to specifically prepare your disputes and repair your credit, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you're up to date with all the daily and weekly credit repair videos. Okay, that's it for now. I will post another video very soon. Thank you for watching this this really long uh, video. It's like less than 20 minutes long. But I hope you've, um, you know, gotten to this point because this is some really good information in my opinion. Um, if you have any questions or concerns, please leave a comment. I would really appreciate that. Um, and I will see you on the next video. Take it easy, guys.